today we would look at restoration and revolution in France from 1815 to 1830. The final defeat and exile of Napoleon led to the restoration of the Bourbons on the throne of France. Louis XVIII returned uh, after the defeat of Napoleon and after him his brother Charles X became the king of France. They ruled France from 1815 to 1830 when the July Revolution led to the final overthrow of the Bourbons. Louis had some excellent uh, kingly virtues or qualities as Guizot had said, some negative and some positive. Louis knew that he had the difficult task of ruling over two peoples virtually, those who had supported the revolution and those who had returned with him. He therefore followed a policy of reconciliation and indeed the real significance of Louis lies in his failure. By the time he died, the policy of reconciliation had been abandoned. A quarter century of revolution and warfare had indeed transformed France and it would have been extremely difficult to achieve a social restoration to the structure uh, before 1789. Indeed, even uh, royal absolutism would have been extremely difficult to be effectively established. Therefore, Louis had virtually started by having a charter imposed on him. He granted the people a charter which preserved some of the uh, basic liberties that the French had enjoyed after the revolution. But there was a, a difference of approach to the uh, charter. While a majority of people believed that the charter was imposed by the people on the king, the royalists argued that the charter had been a free gift of the king and could be withdrawn if he so desired. In a, in a way, the charter defined the new regime as a constitutional monarchy and it, it also defined the nature of the regime. The charter stipulated that there would be two houses, the lower house of the chamber of deputies which would be elected and the house of peers which would be nominated. Now the franchise was restricted and indeed the pays legal or the political nation comprised only 90,000 people. To be a deputy one had to be at least 40 years of age and pay an annual tax of 1,000 francs. To be an elector, one had to be at least 30 and pay at least 300 francs worth of taxation. But the charter also granted certain liberties like uh, equality of all before law, freedom from arbitrary arrest, freedom from conscience and confirmation of property rights. This is very significant because it confirmed the right of property which had been acquired uh, in course of the revolutionary uh, quarter century, uh, both under revolution and under Napoleon, the massive transfer of land that had followed the confiscation of church property and property of the emigre nobility. At a level, the position of various groups of politicians and people uh, in their relation to the charter defined their position. To the right of the charter were the ultra royalists. This was a group which believed in absolute uh, monarchy and which wanted to make the restoration a full fledged restoration of the old order. This group was led by the king's brother Kaunt Dartova who was a believer in royal absolutism. The constitutional party so called stood right behind the charter. To them the charter 
was the sheet anchor of the uh, regime. They were laid by uh, a man like Decaz and also uh, Richelieu. To the left of the charter stood a motley crowd. Uh, they were, uh, they included liberals, republicans and even Bonapartists. They generally believed that the, the regime uh, needed to be transformed to a more liberal, uh, more uh, at a, in a manner of speaking more democratic. This group included men like Casimir Perrier, Lafitte and more importantly Benjamin Constant. The regime started in an atmosphere of hope when Louis granted general amnesty to his people. But what followed uh, has sometimes been called the white terror and it indeed matched the worst excesses of the terror during the revolution. Nineteen generals were court-martialed and this included Ney who had been described as the bravest of the brave. The elections were held in this kind of an atmosphere which virtually was characterized by a civil war in the countryside uh, between the uh, supporters of the revolution and those who had returned with uh, uh, Louis and were seeking to re-win their prerogatives, their privileges. The elections returned the moderates to power and Richelieu who laid the uh, government now was uh, willing to adopt a policy of reconciliation to try and effect some recovery of France. Indeed, from uh, 1816 to about 1840, France was ruled with moderate success by Richelieu and then uh, the Kaj. The huge indemnity was paid off, the army of occupation left France and it seemed France was uh, way on the back to recovery. France was readmitted as one of the major European powers when the quadruple alliance was enlarged uh, into the quintuple alliance uh, by 1818. Now, in a situation like this, when a uh, men like the Abbe Grégoire was elected, the ultras kicked off a terrific row and uh, the, the election had to be set aside. Now, this was a signal uh, that the ultras were trying to make themselves heard and were very active in French politics. Richelieu uh, was obliged to resign and he was uh, followed by the Kaj. But what really came as the turning point was the murder of Duc de Berry. Duc de Berry was a younger son of Comte d'Artois, the younger brother of Louis XVIII. The ultras now left no alternative and Louis was also pressurized into adopting a fairly ultra-royalist stance. Descartes was a talented administrator and he tried to uh, introduce reforms like opening up the society, removing censorship, etc. But obviously, his hands were very seriously tied. And after Descartes was obliged to resign, Richelieu, now leaning more to the right, once more became uh, the minister. He suspended uh, individual freedom, freedom of the press and introduced what was called the double vote, uh, voting in the arrondissement and in the countryside. Now, this uh, was a leverage to the ultras who now were able to return larger number of people to the chamber. But Richelieu find the going very hard and was replaced by Villel. Villel uh, started by a fairly reactionary policy uh, and uh, what again was the context of policy becoming more uh, ultra was the fact that a number of Republican and Bonapartist risings had characterized French politics between 1818 and 1820. 
Charles ruled France from 1824 to 1830. He had some, uh, some virtues, could have been probably a, a good and effective king. But what was really significant what is, was his antecedents and his opinions. He was a die-hard ultra-royalist. One of his characteristic saying was that he would have preferred to chop wood than be the king of England. The events of Charles's reign can be seen under the three successive ministers, Villel from 1824 to 29, and this could be described as the first advance of royalism. Then Martinac, 1828-29, the retreat of royalism, and finally Polignac, 1829-30, the second advance and defeat of royalism. Now, what Charles did or, or his ministers did was to gradually bring back the old order. First of all, they passed a legislation deciding to pay the emigrant nobility a huge sum of compensation. This was uh, known as the law of the milliard. Now, in order to enable the government to get the resources to pay this compensation, interest on national debt was reduced and this obviously affected the people, particularly the middle class who had invested in government bonds. Secondly, they decided to give the clergy or the church its prerogatives and privileges back. Clerical control over education, which had already been introduced, was tightened. And indeed, the clergy became so powerful that uh, it was uh, later quipped by uh, Wellington that it was to become a government by the clergy, through the clergy for the clergy. Right. So, in a, in a situation like this, it was increasingly being clear that Charles and his ministers aimed at not just an absolutist monarchy, but to bring the entire old order back in France. They, in a way, wished to establish the old regime in what they would believe to be all its glory. Then came a personal friend of the king, Jules de Polignac. Polignac indeed shared the views of Charles to the letter and he indeed declared that it was his determination to reorganize the society, to give back the clergy its weight in uh, state affairs, to create a powerful aristocracy and surround it with privileges. In a way, it was to be the old order with all its uh, ramifications. Now, soon after he had come to power, you know, uh, the liberals had been making some forays into the chamber of deputies. 221 deputies submitted a petition and raised the question of ministerial responsibility. They, they demanded that Polignac did not have the support of the majority and should resign. What, what Charles did was to prorogue the uh, chamber and then dissolve it and order fresh elections. The fresh elections returned in the fresh elections in July returned 274 liberal deputies. Their number had indeed increased and it was expected that there was still possibility of a compromise. Indeed, what Charles did not realize was that the majority of the uh, well-to-do bourgeois deputies would not have wanted to open the floodgates for popular movements to overtake them once more, as, as they probably did in between 1792 and 95. But Charles instead took the hard line and invoking Char Article 14 of the Charter, introduced four ordinances. He suspended the freedom of the press, dissolved the chamber, changed the electoral law, and asked for new elections. Now, the moment the ordinances were promulgated, the battle lines were drawn. 
from the 27th July onwards, uh, confabulations were going on in the newspaper offices, the journalists and the liberals played a very significant role in this. Uh, in the office of Loth Tribune, they were preparing for a showdown, but in the offices of Lo Nacional under Thier, they were trying to evolve a more moderate solution. Marmont, who was the commandant of the troops in Paris, was preparing for the showdown, militarily speaking. In the, in the, when the workshops were closed, the workers came onto the streets and particularly the eastern part of the city, huge barricades went up. These were reminiscent of the uh, journeys during the uh, early revolutionary period. The people of Paris were once again on the roads prepared to fight the government. Thiers gave the solution of an orderly, orderliness alternative. Louis Philippe, the Duke of Orleans, was now invited to be the Lieutenant General of the Kingdom and Louis uh, accepted this and promised to surround his monarchy with Republican institutions. He appeared on the Hotel de Ville or the Town Hall along with Lafayette and made this uh, pronouncement. The July Revolution was effected, the Bourbons finally uh, fell from power and a middle class uh, bourgeois monarchy of Louis Philippe was inaugurated in France uh, and he lasted till 1848. Louis Philippe ruled France from 1815 to 1848 and indeed presented a different image altogether. The image of a middle class king with his top hat and a rolled umbrella in his hand and his tail coat. He, he was shorn of the old regalia. Now, Louis was emphasizing that a middle class French king was expected to be in 1830, uh, middle class, respectable and unspectacular. His period was characterized by the domination of the higher bourgeoisie in France. One change that one notices immediately with the inauguration of this monarchy was that the charter was no longer even claimed to have been a grant, a free grant of the king. He started by accepting the charter as virtually the constitution of the regime. The article 14 which gave emergency and extraordinary powers to the king had been withdrawn. And it was, uh, uh, it, it, was, it was followed by a further expansion of the uh, electorate. Now, the pay legal comprised about 200,000 people. The age of becoming a deputy was brought down to 30 and one could be an elector at the age of 25. The property qualifications also had been somewhat modified. So, this was a very important uh, point. The National Guard was reconstituted and it was given the right to elect its own officers. More importantly, the tricolor was accepted as the flag of the new regime. The tricolor was the flag of the revolution. The tricolor was also honoring the revolution and this is something that was symbolically very significant because the regime had started by paying a tribute to the memory of the revolution and over the next 18 years the revolution came to mean the republican revolution rather than the moderate revolution of 1789. Another significant law was Guizot's law on primary education. This law on primary education meant that every uh, a municipality must have a primary school. And this led to a growth in primary education and therefore as a consequence a growth in the number of reading public. So by 1840s there were many more people in France who could read 
and who could directly or indirectly receive the new ideas which tended to celebrate the republic and the republican uh, memory. Now, here also we find a, a few political groupings, we can't call them parties yet. They were the legitimists, those who still supported the, the Bourbons, they were a small but yet significant group. There was a party of resistance, uh, which included men like Casimir Perrier and uh, Lafitte, and they stood behind the uh, bourgeois monarchy of Louis Philippe. They thought that enough had been achieved and no more concession should be given. Now, recent French historians have noticed that between 1830 and 1848, there had been a significant rise in republican sentiments, what Henri Gilma had called la première resurrection de la république, the first resurrection of the republic in 1848. Indeed, the uh, evolution of mentalities over the next two decades would explain this uh, rise of republicanism. The revolution of 1789 was compatible with the consulate phase of Napoleon with even Louis Philippe. But what was increasingly valorized was the Republic of 1792. The, what was brought back into memory was the abortive constitution of 1793 and even the Jacobin phase, the phase of terror, so called terror also uh, gained certain legitimacy. Now, as has been uh, said that one could not honor the republican institutions, one could not honor the revolution without you know leading to this kind of an, uh, this kind of a legitimacy being endowed to, to them. Increasingly, uh, ideas were also being uh, developed and these ideas tended to favor republican sentiments. For example, uh, we we just mentioned uh, a few only. First of all, Delacroix painted the famous painting of liberty leading the people. Romanticism, which was conservative, even reactionary at the beginning of the century, with men like Chateaubriand representing the more conservative uh, hue of them, now acquired uh, a revolutionary value. Romanticism became an anti value to the bourgeoisie, as one historian has put it. Hugo or Alfred de Vigny, they represented the revolutionary face of romanticism. George Sand uh, introduced entirely new, uh, perhaps more radical social and political sensibilities. At the same time, uh, there was a selection of Bonapartism as well, but I will come to that later. Now, in, and, and most of all, by the 1840s, history was being written afresh. Four books came out very quickly in quick succession. Michelet and Jules Michelet and Louis Blanc's History of the Revolution, Lamartine's History of the Girondins and Esquiros's History of the Mountains. Now, all these tended to valorize and celebrate the more radical phase of the revolution and the, the republic. Now, apart from this rise in republican sentiment, there were, were other uh, uh, important groups as well. This period witnessed the gradual growth of socialism, you know, particularly the utopian variety of socialism. Uh, Saint-Simon, Proudhon, Fourier, Louis Blanc, they tried to understand the plight of the new working class which was coming up and therefore, socialism was becoming a factor in French politics. And there was another group called the Bonapartists. Napoleon Bonaparte's nephew, Louis Napoleon, was the leader of this group, and he wrote uh, Des Idées Napoleoniennes, which was uh, the kind of uh, book that contained the basic Bonapartist ideas. They wanted to use the memory of the uh, emperor to buttress their political power in France. Indeed, uh, by 1839, the remains of uh, Bonaparte was brought from St. Helena and installed with all the pomp in the building 
known as Avaline, and, and, and a great uh, cenotaph uh, created or, or erected for him. So, these are the various groups. We can see the developments, political developments uh, in, in three phases. From 1830 to 1836 was a phase of acute disturbances. There were working class disturbances and the government had used some force to quell them. After that from 1836 to 46, France was ruled with relative uh, uh, ease by uh, mainly by Guizot who was in power for a very long time, though in foreign policy there had been some setbacks. But the last phase uh, from 1846 to 48 uh, opened with a great and a general crisis uh, that characterized not just France but the whole of Europe. France became a republic once more. The second republic was inaugurated. Lamartine, the famous poet, was elected as the provisional president and the government even included uh, Albert who was a member of the working class. The crisis of the July monarchy was economic, social and political, but there was also a crisis of the governing classes and some recent historians have tried to understand it in psychological terms. The confidence of the ruling classes had also been undermined by the specter of a popular revolution emerging once more and that is precisely what happened. Lamartine had called it a revolution of public conscience and a revolution of contempt, a contempt for the bourgeois domination. The crisis was compounded also by a moral crisis among the governing classes, but the totality of the crisis really did not allow the July uh, monarchy to survive. And therefore, uh, the February revolution of 1848 ultimately consumed Louis Philippe's July monarchy, which had witnessed the predomination of the higher bourgeois in France and led to yet another revolution which produced the second republic in France.